Hey guys, what's up? It's Tom. In this video, I'm going to be going over how I was able to affordably through hike the Appalachian Trail back in 2016. I remember when I was in the planning stages of my through hike, how overwhelming it was to be researching all this gear and seeing that a lot of the popular equipment ended up being really expensive and I was second guessing whether I could be affording a lot of this stuff or if I felt comfortable spending that amount of money on my gear. But after doing a lot of research and testing some stuff out, I was able to find a pretty great setup at a really affordable price. So I'm going to be going over with you the top five pieces of equipment, which are the backpack, tent, sleeping bag, sleeping pad, and footwear. I highly recommend all of this stuff still, being that it held up with me firsthand during my hike. And unfortunately, since I did hike a number of years ago, some of it is discontinued, but I will be providing updated versions or substitutes for this equipment that I, I think will also get the job done. I remember being very tempted to want to purchase the more expensive, lighter gear, but I also knew that then that would be taking away from my trail budget when I was out there and the unforeseen expenses that I might need that money for. Yes, having fancier or lighter equipment may help you be more comfortable out there, having less weight on your back, but at the end of the day, the most important thing to having a successful through hike is your mental determination and staying healthy enough to get all those miles behind you. You're still gonna have to carry on all your equipment on your back and hike every step of the way up and down mountains. So from my experience, I don't think a couple more pounds on your back is gonna be the deal breaker that would stop you from completing your hike. Okay, so first I'm going to be going over the backpack that I used. I didn't really have any prior hiking or backpacking experience before my through hike. So what I did was just go to the local Dick Sporting Goods and that's where I found this pack. It's called the Field and Stream Mountain Scout 65 liter pack. This thing held up really well. I was very surprised. It's listed right now at $80 on the Dick's website. Um, if 65 liters seems a little bit too large for you, I understand. I was carrying around some extra uh, camera equipment being that I was capturing a lot of photos and videos. So they do have a 45 liter option that is listed at $50 if that would seem more suitable to you. So the 65 liter Mountain Scout is listed at weighing four pounds, seven ounces, and the 45 liter is at four pounds. So not super heavy, not super light, but a good cheap affordable pack that will get the job done. And speaking from my experience, the 65 liter pack that I used held up pretty well. There were a couple hiccups in the beginning, and I think that was more so my inexperience than the pack's quality. I didn't have the straps tight enough to my back, and therefore the weight was not sitting in the right spot, and the seams pulled a little bit off, but I was still able to hike a couple states like that, and then I actually got it fixed up in trail days. But I'm almost positive that was my fault, and I think I definitely exceeded the weight recommendations of the pack again because i had all this equipment my my starting weight i think was around like 70 pounds which is looking back a little bit stupid but um this pack held that like a champ so i also wanted to add an additional pack recommendation because i actually just recently saw this on amazon they have the granite gear crown 2 60 liter pack listed at a little bit more expensive than the packs that i had just mentioned but for 120 dollars they have this pack which is a great price. Um, it's listed even on the Granite Gear website for around $200. So this is a really good pack. A buddy that I hiked with on the trail loved his Granite Gear pack. I think he had the Crown 1, so this is an updated version of that. I would imagine that it will hold up really well. And at a weight of under two and a half pounds, I, I think that's a great price uh, for a pack that I know will hold up. Okay, moving on to the tent that I used. So unfortunately, this is one of the items that is discontinued which really sucks because I was so, so impressed with this tent. It's called the Eureka Spitfire one person tent. And this thing held up so well in the trail, really took a beating. And I don't wanna to spend too much time on it because it is discontinued. But when I bought it, it was around $100. And it weighed about two pounds and 11 ounces. I ended up shedding a little bit more weight by ditching the tent bag. And along the way, I lost some stakes and ended up using my trekking poles as stakes. So. That's a little ultra like gear hack that uh that was pretty cool but being that it is discontinued i'm gonna recommend a different eureka tent which is the eureka solitaire one person tent and this tent is actually cheaper and lighter so it's listed right now on the eureka website at 90 dollars, and it weighs in at two pounds 10 ounces which again that's hard to beat for the price and the weight. And it looks very similar in construction to the Spitfire being that it's made up of just two 
arc shaped poles and it's probably very quick to set up. I would set my tent up in under two minutes. So it looks like you could get this set up pretty quickly as well. I did not use a footprint during my hike, so that sheds some more weight. And that also says that this material made by Eureka holds up over any kind of terrain and, and a lot of wear and tear. So the Eureka Solitaire, 90 bucks, just over two pounds. I think that's pretty good. Okay, moving on to the sleeping bag that I used. This might be another item that is actually discontinued, but I'm gonna leave you with another recommendation that I found. So the bag I used was called the Mountain Hardware Lamina Z Flame 22. I was a little skeptical at first getting a mummy bag, but I got used to it pretty quickly, so I don't think that's really an issue if, if you're wondering about that. I bought it for around 100 bucks. Um, I found it online for $100. So again, that's a 22 degree rated bag. I wouldn't really go that much higher in temperature rating because it could get cold during the night at some parts of the trail. So this bag is great. It kept me warm throughout my whole hike on those cold nights. So this bag is listed at weighing two pounds and 11 ounces, which again, that's a very reasonable weight um, for a synthetic 22 degree rated bag. I think you'd be hard pressed to find something better for this price. However, I did because I have a feeling this might be hard to find, so I, I looked for something else that was similar in price and quality, and I was able to find a bag called the Mountain Equipment Lunar 2 Sleeping Bag. This bag is listed on REI right now for $103.73, and this bag is rated for 28 degrees, and it weighs 2 pounds, 4 ounces, it's listed at. So for around 100 bucks, a bag that weighs around 2 pounds and rated at 28 degrees, I think that's a great deal. So again, that's the Mountain Equipment Lunar 2 sleeping bag. All right, moving on to the sleeping pad. This is probably the most popular item that I had. The pad is called the Thermarest Z-Lite Sole sleeping pad, and it's listed for 35 bucks right now. I think you could probably find some cheaper foam pads, but you're not gonna end up saving more than like 10 or $20 on that, and I don't necessarily think it's worth sacrificing quality of using a lesser known brand and being that one of the sides on this is reflective it helps with insulation so if you're going to get a foam pad I, I would recommend getting this one it folds up accordion style and there were some nights where for extra hip support i would just fold it where there's extra padding around my hip area and that would help me sleep on those firmer less comfortable surfaces i use a foam pad rather than an air pad or blow up pad I opted for it because it was cheaper, but also along the way, I'm, I encountered a lot of people that did use the blow up pads and they might be more comfortable, but there's also the possibility of puncturing the pad. And then with that brings more challenges, which is do you need to carry on a patch kit or do you have to go into town and fix this or buy another one? So I opted for just using the foam pad and it worked really well for me. All right, so moving on to the last item, which is footwear. I wore Solomons the entire length of my trip and I couldn't be happier with them. I was so, so super impressed and happy that I, I went with Solomons. I ended up only using two pairs of shoes the entire way, which I think is pretty unheard of, um, at least in the hiking circles that I encountered. But Solomons are built with great quality, they're super comfortable, and I would recommend them highly to anyone. So I actually started out using a mid-top hiking boot from Solomon called the X Ultra Mid 2. I don't think that they make the Ultra Mid 2 anymore. I think they're onto the three now. This is one of the items that I actually spent a little bit more money on. I thought it was worth it, being that your feet are what's literally carrying you the 2,000 plus mile distance on the Appalachian Trail. So this is not something that you wanna skimp on. You wanna take care of your feet along the whole length of the trail or else you're gonna be in for a, a rude awakening. So the hiking boots were great if you like the mid tops and the boot style, but I would more so recommend the second pair that I ended up with, which is pretty much the same shoe, but it was low top instead of mid top, and it didn't have the Gore-Tex features, which I don't necessarily think that you need Gore-Tex. I think it's more so supposed to be water resistant rather than waterproof, and if you're hiking on rainy or wet days in the trail, your shoe's going to get so wet that it's going to basically be submerged. So. The water resistance isn't really going to hold up and it's just going to take longer to dry. So that's why I would opt for just getting a, a lighter material on the outside. And that's why I ended up opting for the mesh version of the lower top, which was the X Ultra hiking shoe. 
They're kind of like trail runners and they're onto the X Ultra 3 again. But also after looking at these shoes, I realized that they might have changed the name or made another similar shoe and that's called the Pathfinder. This looks really good. So the great thing about these Solomons is the tread is super, super good, super grippy. Takes a while to wear down. They have really good toe guards at the, at the front of the shoe, which helps you from stubbing your toe. I stub my toe so many times a day, every day of my hike, being on a route or rocks or some other obstruction on the ground. But uh, it's very easy to just not lift your foot up enough and end up stubbing your toe. So these toe guards held up really, really well. I saw some other hikers using different types of shoes and a lot of the toe guards started peeling off. That was the first sign that their shoe was starting to go and that would cause its own obstacles getting caught on stuff as well. So these really, really held up really well. They're super comfortable, they dry easy and they protect your foot. So there's really not much more you can ask for. The hiking boots, these days, the Ultra 3s are pretty expensive. They're upwards of like 150 bucks, but the Pathfinder is listed at 65 bucks on Amazon. So that's a great price for a great shoe. I would highly recommend that. All right, guys, so that wraps it up for this video. I hope that you gained some insight on how you could affordably acquire some through hiking equipment. I hope that this knowledge can help you, whether you're a beginner backpacker, dreaming of your first through hike or an experienced backpacker looking to get some great equipment for a cheaper price. But with that being said, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. If there's another topic that you'd want me to cover in another video, please let me know in the comments down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you haven't listened to any of the Hiker Trash podcast episodes, feel free to check those out. Haven't made one in a while, but they're pretty timeless as far as learning about people's experience through hiking. And I think there's some wisdom to be gained from each episode. So thanks again for watching and happy trails.